Okay, so uh, yes, we are in Revelation. You want to turn there with me to chapter 21. And uh, what I'm going to do tonight uh, is get right to this city that's talked about in Revelation 21. Uh, so I'm actually going to almost skip all of uh, verses 1 to 8 uh, because I really would like to get to the city. And I know the next time I'm coming to speak is not until next year. Uh, so it's a number of months away. I'll probably want to talk about something different then. So I really want to talk about this city in chapter 21. Uh, so the first thing, uh, before we get to verse, uh, well, before we skip all of verses 1 to 8, uh, let's do verses 1 and 2 again. It says, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there is no more sea. Then I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them and they shall be his people's. That should be plural there. They should be his peoples. God himself will be with them. It's hard to stop reading. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There should be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, right, for these words are faithful and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And we'll actually, we'll stop there. So all things, uh, it, there's this uh, change that's taken place. Judgment has passed. Something new has come, a new heaven and a new earth. John sees this. He writes about it. And then he makes mention of this city that's coming down out of heaven from God. And joining with this vision of the city coming down out of heaven from God, there's this voice that accompanies it from the throne saying the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his peoples. God himself will be with them. This is the heart of God. This is the heart of God on display for us. He desires to dwell with men. And this is going to be the uh, fulfillment of what is in his own heart, that the, the day is coming in, in such a way uh, that we, uh, we can only imagine what this is going to be like, where this city is coming down and there's this declaration that the dwelling place of God is with men and he's going to dwell with them and they shall be his peoples, plural. So this city, it's described uh, by John as a bride adorned for her husband. That's how John describes this city as he looks up and he sees it coming down. He, he, the first thing he wants to say about it is like a bride adorned for her husband. Um, and you know, the, one of the primary thoughts that should be here the emotion that perhaps John has in his heart as he looks up and he sees this city coming down is the, is the, the emotion of joy. It's just this, this great gladness of heart, this joy, because that's what's associated when a bride is is adorned for her husband. You know, my wedding being, well, today is our six month anniversary, which I Thank my wife for reminding me. <laughs> but uh, uh, so like that, it's not that far back where I, you know, saw her as a, a bride adorned for her husband and, and uh, joy absolutely characterizes that time, that day, uh, gladness of heart. And so here comes God's dwelling place, his tabernacle, this city is coming down and it's like a marriage is happening. He's going to dwell with his peoples. And this is the relationship that's coming about in the most special and peculiar way in that future day. And this city is being described as a bride. Now for us who read the Bible, uh, 
familiar with it, as soon as we see that there's this this uh, language of a bride, we might say, oh, wait a second, I think I know. I think I know what's going on here. The bride, I know a bride. But we're not sure yet. Maybe from that verse, we can't quite carry things out where we might like to. We might want to think we can identify who this bride is, but maybe there's just not enough there to be able to do that. So maybe we hesitate. We say, okay, well, let's just keep on reading here. Well, when we get down to verse nine, which is what we're going to do now, we're going to get down to verse nine. It's going to help us to identify who this bride is. Yes, it's a city. It's the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, but there's more to it than that. There's more to it than that. Verse nine says, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bulls filled with the seven last plagues came and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. As soon as we read that, we're like, wait a second. Who, who's the lamb? Well, the lamb is Christ. Well, who's the bride of Christ? <laughs> and it doesn't take us too long to kind of connect the dots. We say, that's the church. That's the church. I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And, and, and what does John see? Verse 10, he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God. <clears throat> we understand that the church in other parts of scripture, in the New Testament in particular, right? Especially in Ephesians chapter five, we understand that the church is spoken of as the bride of Christ. Um, and so when we get to this point, you know, the reader of scripture uh, this, the one who studies it is going to be inclined to think that this is speaking of the church. This city, it's a literal city. I know there might be some disagreement on that. Uh, most of us here probably do think take it as a literal city, but I know that there are those who don't. I take this as an actual city, but it's not just a literal city. It, it, this is a place in which there are people dwelling and those who are dwelling there, they are those who would be characterized as the bride. And that would be the church. This city, you know, brothers and sisters, like if I could just put it as simply as possible. And I, how many times I've read this and how many times I just haven't really thought about it in this way. But now I think every time I read it, I think about it this way. Brothers and sisters, what we're reading here, what we're going to be looking at tonight is home. <laughs> this is home. This is more home than we have ever even imagined home could be. <laughs> when we get there uh, tonight, we're thinking about it. We're going to read about it. We're going to try to imagine it. There's some pretty incredible things here. I can't wait to share some of these things with you. Uh, this is home. It's a literal city. And yet it is a people, one of the peoples that God is going to be the God of. And this entity, this grouping of peoples is the church. And that's why it's referred to as the bride, the lamb's wife. There are other parts in scripture that help us to identify the church as the bride of Christ. But we want to read a little bit more about this city. Look at verse 10 again. He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. He showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. John is taken to a high mountain. Now, I admit to you, sometimes you, you, you read things and you, you're, you're picturing things, and I hope you're doing that tonight. You're acting like a prophet, like we were on Sunday, acting like a prophet, seeing the future, trying to put the details together of the scene. And I'm not really sure where John is here. Now, there's a good there's a, a good reasoning that would put him in heaven. He was caught up to heaven. He's been shown things there. Uh, so... To imagine him on earth, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether he's on earth or in heaven. But in any case, he's taken to this great and high mountain. 
to, to be shown this, this city that's descending out of heaven from God. I think this, and I'll give some more evidence to it as well. I think this is an indication that this city does not come all the way down to the earth. The city does not come all the way down to the earth. In order to describe the city, in order to see the city, John's going to have to be on a high mountain. And it is there on a high mountain that he's going to be able to give the description of the city. The city's not going to come all the way down. It's going to stay suspended there in heaven. Now, we know there's three heavens, right? So in the heaven of the clouds, not in the heaven where God is, but in that, the, let's see what he got. The This is, that's the first heaven, right? Uh, and there it will be suspended there. And I'll give you some more evidence and pretty cool things to consider as we think about this city, just shining there, <laughs> shining there in the sky, having verse 11 says the glory of God. So when you're picturing this, you're thinking of a city that's, that's there in the sky and it's shining. You know, that image should not be strange to us. Something there in the sky shining. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, giving a little subtle hint at, at where things are going to go. Uh, but here is this city. It's shining with the glory of God. The glory of God um, is what characterizes the light that's coming from it. Um, I remember a preacher uh, some time ago, a long time ago, actually, that was talking about glory. And in order to help communicate the idea of glory, he said it in this way. He said, glory glory like glowing like light and that you know that stuck with me ever since uh that's the idea of glory it's light that's coming forth that's just shining radiant and, and beautiful especially the glory of god and that's what's coming off of this city beautiful light and look what it says about the light um her light was like a most precious stone like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. This is something we are going to want to hang on to because multiple times in this passage, and we're going to, we're going to grab some really <laughs> treasures of thoughts uh, based on this, this idea of something being clear, clear as crystal like a Jasper stone. Hang on to that. We're going to see a little more about that in just a second. Um, actually go to verse 18. Now verse 18 uh, says the construction of its wall. So it has a wall was of Jasper. And now I know many of us, when we think about heaven, we think about the streets of gold, right? And uh, I just want you to know that, that, uh, there's more than a street that's gold. It's actually singular. We'll read that in just a second. Um, it's more than, more than just a street. Look what it says. The city was pure gold. The city was pure gold. Mm. But look what it says next. Like clear glass. It goes on to talk about the foundations of the wall and all the precious stones that are in it. Uh, down to verse 21, it says the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was one pearl. And here's the street. The street of the city was pure gold. And look what it says again. Like transparent glass. All these words of something being clear, something like clear glass, like clear as crystal. And here you have transparent glass. You have everything that's just see-through. In order to help maybe get uh, what's going on here uh, and to get some value in, in these details, let's go on to verse 22. It says, I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it or upon it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The lamb is its light. Or the lamb is its lamp. So now think about this city now. Think about the city. There it is. It's like suspended in the sky. We haven't even gotten to the dimensions of it yet. That's very interesting. We'll get to that in a second. But it's uh, this very large city there in the heavens 
and it's just shining and it's shining with the glory of God. It's shining because the lamb is in the midst of it, shining out with his glory. Beauty that we, we, we don't understand yet. What we're accustomed to seeing is light that's been created, right? Uh, we look at the sun, we look at the moon, we look at the stars, and these do show us the glory of God. Um, the heavens declare the glory of God, right? The firmament shows his handiwork. And, and we realize that this is dis displaying his glory, but it's all created light. What we're talking about here that's shining out of the midst of this city, that's shining in the city, is uncreated light. <laughs> can, you, can we even... Uh, <laughs> What is, what is that going to be like? What is it going to be like? Uncreated light. This is our home. We are, the, what are we called? It, it, what does Paul call us? I think it's Paul. Yeah. We are children of light. We ourselves are children of light and we are going to see him as he is. And we are going to be made like him. And here we are going to dwell. This place is our home and the lamb is in the midst of it. And he is shining there with his glory. And we're going to just behold it continuously. The beautiful radiance that just comes from him, not created light, but uncreated light. And now you get this, this thought that everything seems to be presented to us as transparent. So, so if the lamb is in the midst of it, of the city shining, it's shining his light. It just permeates the entire city. Doesn't it? There's, there's no like blockage of the, of the light. There's everything's transparent. It's just going through the whole city. There's no shadows there. It's just, we're, we're the children of light. The Lord is light. Everything is transparent. Everything's just being, the light is just shining through everything. And not only shining through everything, but out, right? Out of the city. And that's what makes it so interesting to notice that we're told that even the street is transparent. The street is transparent. What does that mean? Right? It's the light is shining down. The light is shining through the city. It's shining out of the city. It's shining down from the city, even through the street of the city, down to earth. This is another evidence I submit to you. This city is not coming all the way down. It's just suspended there. It's shining. Can I go ahead and just say, like a sun, <laughs> just shining there in the sky, and this whole city is filled with light and it's shining out of the city. And look what it says in verse 24. It says, and the nations shall walk in its light. And uh, some of your Bibles will have of those who are saved. And that is certainly uh, would be correct that these are the nations of those who are saved. And the nations shall walk in its light light and the kings of the earth bring their glory into it the nations are walking in the light of it so the more evidence this this light this city is not coming all the way down to earth it's this it's suspended there in heaven shining like a sun for everyone that's on the earth to walk in its light <laughs> and this is our own and you're going to have, I don't know, you're going to have people. I understand there's some issues, some issues, questions that you're like, okay, well, if it's, how are the Kings going to bring their glory into it? If it's suspended in the air? Well, I, all I know is I, I think about what Jesus said. Uh, he's taught, what did he tell Nathaniel? You know, he said, you're going to see the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man. Jacob had a dream about a ladder going up and that, you know, the angels were coming up and down. So you had activity that was going from earth to heaven and from heaven to earth and from earth to heaven. It shouldn't be such a strange thought that, that maybe that's part of the activity that's going to take place in this future day, that there will be this activity from earth up into the city and from the city down to earth. 
and all the nations are going to walk in its light. Some people have trouble even with the fact that because they might characterize this whole chapter as what we call the eternal state. Uh, and you say the eternal state, this is after everything we talked about on Sunday, this is a new heaven and a new earth. This is the eternal state, you know, as it would be said, what's with the nations? Like there's nations. <laughs> I thought it's just like, we're all like in heaven and that's the end, the end. <laughs> it's just all, we're all the Christians and the end. <laughs> it's just, it, it's interesting how you look into scriptures and it tends to be more complex than we initially think. <laughs> Beautifully so, though. Beautifully so. There are nations in this future day. And that might be a hard thought to think about. Nations, the church is there in their city. The nations, and we'll talk about Israel in a second. Uh, and the nations are walking on the earth in the light of this city that one of the verses that as I thought about these things and I say, how do I do this? How, how do I try and establish that there's going to be nations in the future? Um, how do we do this? Well, one of the verses that came to mind is uh, in Psalm two. Um, you remember where God is speaking to his son and he says, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today, I have begotten you ask of me and I will surely give the nations. But as what though, as your inheritance and right there, I say, I'm not going to be the one to say that the Lord's inheritance passes away. Like, nope, there's no more nations. What about, isn't it the Lord's inheritance? Well, <laughs> What are you going to do with that? I mean, the nations are the Lord's inheritance. And the very ends of the earth are his possession. I submit to you that these nations are going to exist and they are going to dwell on the earth and they are in the inheritance of the Lord. We'll get to a little bit more on that in just a second. But first, uh, let's go back and uh, talk about this city's, the details of it. Um, Verse 12 says uh, it has a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, so we're talking about the church. We're talking about nations. And now we're talking about Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south and three gates on the west. Now, the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names, the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. He measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. 12,000 furlongs. I think I've done this here before at some point. Uh, so this might be familiar, whether for me or for somebody else, you've heard this. Uh, and maybe your Bible has helped by taking those furlongs and, and translating it into something that we might understand because I don't, I mean, who talks in this language anymore? I mean, what's a furlong? Uh, I went on a I uh, went on a, a jog today. I went for a furlong. I mean, what is that? I don't even know what that means. Well, 12,000 furlongs is about, and there's a little bit of like, it, I'm going to go ahead and say it's 1,400 miles. Sometimes you may hear 1,500 miles. I'm going to go with 1,400 miles. That's the measurement of this city. So this city is 1,400 miles wide. It's 1,400 miles long. This city is huge. <laughs> this is a huge city. But did you see what it says next? It almost like it's interesting. It tells us that its length and its breadth are equal, but there's something else there that the verse says. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. It's 1,400 miles high. 1,400 miles wide, 1,400 miles long. This city is, and, and there's another reason why I say, 
I don't think this city is coming to earth. <laughs> this city is too big. You know, this city is just going to stay there and shine like a sun in the sky. <clears throat> it says it has 12 gates and 12 foundations. Um, there's been a bit of a perplexity here for me because uh, like many, I believe a distinction between Israel and the church and even the nations. So I've had trouble reading this passage. I'm like, I still want to keep the church and Israel as distinct entities. But when I see Israel not mentioned specifically, and I see this city that's called the bride, but I see these 12 gates. I'm, I'm like, maybe is it possible that the, that, if, that Israel and, and the church have been joined together as one now? And I don't think so. Um, you've got 12 gates named after the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, I submit to you that Israel is going to be Israel and the church will be the church and the nations will be the nations and they'll be that. They'll be that forever. They're just going to be that forever. And one of the reasons that they're going to be that forever, always distinct, the nations, Israel and the church, they're, all, they're going to be distinct because God wants to show what he meant to do with each one of them. <laughs> He's going to say, here's, here's the nations. I want to show what my thought was, what my intention was, how I was going to get glory out of the nations. I'm going to show you what I intended. Let me show you with Israel. Let me show you my plan there. Let me put on display the glory I intended to have from Israel. And then let me show you the church. And let me show you what I intended for the church. And all of these things, they're going to be present. And God is going to put on display what he intended to put on display. But as we know, the nations have failed. Israel has failed. And we know the church has failed to really bring God the glory, to put forth what it was that he designed. And so he's going to do it, though. He's going to do it. <laughs> and it's going to make us marvel to see what he intended in all of these things. And these gates have an explanation, which I, I hope you'll find agreeable. I hope you'll find it super cool as well. Let me paint the scene here just a little bit. We're, we're almost done here, but uh, let me paint the scene a little bit here. Um, what we have is we have the nations and we have Israel and then we have the church. So I'm seeing this new Jerusalem, this holy city there suspended, but then I see an earthly Jerusalem where Israel is. There are verses and it, that would be like almost like a whole uh, another study. Um, let me just give you a couple of them to justify Israel's place in the land. That's not going to change. Of Israel, the Lord says, I will make you an eternal excellence. Isaiah 60 verse 15. Israel, I'm going to make you an eternal excellence. Excellence, distinct entity in which I'm going to receive glory. In Deuteronomy 440, the land which the Lord your God is giving you for all time. For all time. That land is theirs. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. This is why skipping over maybe that part wasn't, uh, it could create a question. Um, We'll talk about that afterwards. Maybe. Um, in other places, uh, to Abram, the Lord said, for all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. So they're going to be there. And one of the things that uh, the scriptures speak of the land of Israel as, as Jerusalem as, is his footstool. That. This place, Israel, this place, Jerusalem, the temple, is the place where his feet are. The place where his feet. And then you're kind of looking up into the heavens, and you see his feet there. You look up into the heavens, and you see the sun. It's his face just shining there. There's his face. It's anatomically correct. His feet are on the earth in Jerusalem. His face is shining like the sun through the church. And there the angels are descending and ascending and descending upon the son of man. 
makes a pretty good picture, especially when John at the beginning of the book of Revelation, remember he turned around and what did he see? He saw the Lord. And how did he describe his face? Shining like the sun in its strength. A place of glory for his feet, a place of glory for his face and the nations just enjoying the fact that God is dwelling with them. Uh, this, I, I was speaking about this in one place and this woman came up to me. She gave me this little note. Uh, it was a three from a three-year-old. And this was like, not during the message. This was some other time. And this is what the three-year-old's question was. If God is God and Jesus is God, does that mean his head is up in heaven and his feet are down here on earth? <laughs> and that's from a three-year-old. And this is, I think what we're seeing here, we're seeing his face there, his feet here being glorified in both places those distinct entities of the church and Israel. Now, let me finish with this. Uh, finish with this detail. Uh, we're, what's with these gates? Why, why are the gates named after the tribes of Israel? Um, well, Usually would have like gates in the, the, uh, the old city. Jerusalem would be called the horse gate. And that's typically where the horses came in and he had the refuse gate. Well, that's where the garbage went out, you know, and you had the sheep gate. That's where the sheep came in. Well, you have these gates and they're all named after the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And so all 12 tribes are invited to come into the city. All 12 tribes, Dan, here's your gate. You come in over here. Uh, Zebulun, here's your gate. You come in over here. Judah, here's your gate. That's where you come in and go out. And so they're all invited, all 12 tribes. It's a, it's a righteous nation, and they're all invited to come in. They're all invited to come into the city. They don't dwell in the city, but they're invited into the city. It's the church that dwells there, but there's the presence of the Lamb. And the nation of Israel being a righteous nation, they are invited to come in. And here is <laughs> the super cool part. Um, the dimensions of the city. The width, length, and height are all equal. Some of us know this. There's one other thing in the scriptures where the width, length, and height of something are all equal. And you know what that is, right? Some of you know. The width, length, and height are all equal. Only one other thing in all the scripture. The holy of holies. The holy of holies, both in the tabernacle and in the temple. When they made those places, that room had measurements where the width, now it wasn't 1,400 miles. I hope you understand that. But it was width, length, and height all equal. That's like, this is like a holy of holies. It's a holy of holies with, what, who, you know, what made it a holy of holies? What was so special about that place? God's presence was right in the middle of it. God was dwelling there. That's where his glory was. When we look up this city, and that's exactly what we see. That's where the lamb is. That's where the Lord is. That's where his glory is. And it's just shining, not all covered up so nobody can see, but just shining so everyone can see shining out so everyone can see and even all of israel benjamin say benjamin says i can't come into the holy of holies i'm not of the tribe of levi i'm not of the family of aaron i'm not the high priest i can't come into the holy of holies this is a different day. <laughs> this is a different day. And the Lord says, Benjamin, you can come right on in. You don't have to be a Levite. You don't have to be of the tribe uh, or of the family of Aaron. You don't even have to be the high priest. You are all a righteous nation. And you know what? Right before you read the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus, right before that, in the same chapter, no, in the chapter before, you know what God reveals about his intention for Israel? He wanted them to be a nation of priests. That was the heart of God. Israel, I want you to be a nation of priests. And we read that. Peter writes that about the church. But God wanted Israel to be a nation of priests. And so in this future day, 
all of Israel is going to be invited into the Holy of Holies and God's going to get his desire. When he redeemed Israel, he said, I want a nation of priests. Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> that did not work out. But God is saying, let me show you what I intended to do with my people. Let me show you what I intended to do with the nations. Let me show you what I intended to do with the church. And this is going to happen. And what a day for Israel, a righteous nation. All of you will be righteous, say the prophets, all of you. And they will all be welcome to come into this holy of holies and to draw near to God in a way that they never could previously. It's really quite remarkable. And I want to just quote this last verse. This is from Ezekiel 37. This is a prophecy. It says, and I hope that it makes you think of some things that we've been thinking on here tonight. In Ezekiel 37 and verse 25, it says, then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt. And they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. <clears throat> that was a good one. And it wasn't even the one I meant to read, though. It was, where's that other one? <laughs> ah, crisis moment here. <laughs> oh, there was one. Oh, can I just do one more? Just, just one more. I didn't quote it. Isaiah 60. This is, this is just, one, just a couple words. I know I'm taking up prayer time here. Isaiah 60, verse 19. The sun shall no longer be your light by day. How do you like that? Isaiah 60, verse 19, talking about his people, Israel, he's, prophesying about a day when the sun is no longer going to be their light. Now that fits in with what we're thinking about. The sun's not going to be their light anymore because that city, that Holy of Holies suspended in the sky is going to give them their light for nor for brightness. Shall you the moon give light to you, but the Lord will be to you an everlasting light and your God, your glory. Actually, that kind of goes along with this. It's like, it's very happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's just like a very happy thought. Your God shall be your glory. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. And the days of your morning shall be ended. Also, your people shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. What a prophecy. And then we read in Revelation that, you know, here's this city just radiating gloriously uh, with light from the Lamb. And the nations are walking in its light. And Israel, Israel's not going to need the sun anymore. <laughs> this city is going to be their light. Um, well, we should pray. Uh, Father, we just thank you so much for these thoughts. They're, they're um, big. They're big thoughts. They're uh, to grab a hold of, to imagine, to put the details together. But I pray that if, if there's just one thing that we can take away uh, from thinking about all these things is that we've been thinking about our home. Uh, this city, it's characterized as the bride the, the lamb's wife. Uh, and so we just, we know that that's us. We know that that's the church. And so when we read of a city, a place prepared for us, we know this is that place in which we are going to dwell with you forever. And oh, to think about it, this is our home. And there we will be as children of light, dwelling in a city of light with the lamb and his light. <laughs> And it's just going to be wonderful all around, surprisingly, wonderfully great. And we just look forward to it. One day we're going to be there. We're not going to be thinking about it, wondering about it, reading about it. We'll actually be there in that city 
and we'll turn to one another and say, remember when we were talking about this in Yonkers that one night <laughs> and it'll be actually happening. Oh, just what a day it's going to be. And uh, we look forward to it. Thank you for revealing these things to us. You very much could have kept these things from us, but you've made them known. And, uh, and here we are just marveling about it. And we thank you. Uh, so we just give thanks, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen.